My love affair with art has been lifelong. I've always really had a creative fire and passion inside of me that I've felt an urge and even a compulsion to create. So whether it was painting alone in my room, uh, teaching myself how to use oil painting, teaching myself how to draw, or you know, eventually continuing on into a very prestigious art school and then starting um, several creative companies. My mural painting company, uh, my body painting and event company, and then uh, an, a TV show based on the creative art of body paint. So I feel like it's always been a part of me and I pretty much live and breathe art. I really love painting because it's something that I think came very naturally to me. It was the first uh, art form that I explored. However, I really consider myself a multidisciplinary artist because as much as I love painting and as much as painting is like the skills that pays the bills because that's what I pretty much use in my mural company and my custom painting company and um, with body painting, I really love interactive sculpture. I think that is my true passion. I love making things that kind of take art out of the rarefied environment of a white pedestal in a white room that is the classic sort of gallery or museum atmosphere and bring it into the world, bring it into life and just remind people that art can be an integral part of everyday life. So I really like taking the do not touch sign off of art. I think that's why I love interactive sculpture. I like art that you can touch, that you can explore, that you can move around. And I think that really applies to body painting as well because it takes your painting and it brings it to life out into the world where people can pose with it, interact with it, um, be amazed like, is that real, is that paint? So I think uh, just reminding people that art is Interactive and a part of life is definitely one of my missions as an artist. I started out as an art student in Chicago and I ran a mural painting company that grew and grew and grew right out of school and then I got the travel bug really bad so I ended up backpacking around Europe making a living with my brushes and paint, painting murals in various countries um, all over the world and then I came back to America I spent a couple years just like getting myself organized and uh, making a little bit more money, saving some money. And then I bought a camper van and took off again across America where I did a lot of arts residencies and really explored the sculptural side of my art making. From there, I ended up landing in Las Vegas, kind of just on a chance. And I met my future husband, who is a performer with Cirque du Soleil, and started my body painting and event company. And that really just revved up. Uh, I think I really just found a market, found a niche that just hadn't really been explored uh, yet. I was pretty new to, um, to the game. I was one of the pioneers of the industry. And so that led to me creating, producing, and judging a body paint competition show called Skin Wars. And now, honestly, because of the pandemic, I feel like that has really just made me First of all, have time to go back into my studio because all of these huge events, I was just about to fly to Berlin where I was a resident artist with the Weinmeister Hotel. I had a huge exhibition planned with um, a Berlin Gallery Week. Um, I was gonna be an artist in residence with the Museum of Illusion there. Everything just stopped. And so, you know, like a lot of us, I just had to hunker down and revisit what am I doing? And I think for a lot of people, especially established people who are very far along in our careers, it almost threw us backwards into like those seed days, you know, where we're just trying to figure things out, like right out of college or right before college or right after graduating high school where you're like, who am I? What do I want to do? I think it just threw us all back into those days. So suddenly I had more time in my studio and I ended up making more paintings on canvas, which I just really hadn't had time to do for a long time. Um, I've started making these little mini paintings, which are really cute and fast, and I can make them uh, very quickly, like assembly line style. Those have ended up selling like hotcakes at 
recycled propaganda gallery in the Arts District in Vegas. They're in the gift shop at Area 15 now. And that's just been a really fun way for me to pursue my idea that everyone should be able to afford original art. And so these little paintings, they sell for $25 each. Anyone can afford to have one of them, but it's um, a way to sort of get my work out to a wider audience and hopefully put a little bit of joy and a little bit of art into people's lives. I think art education is crucial and it is really a tragedy that it's being cut from a lot of school curriculums because I think that art training, it's not just for its own sake. It's because when you get trained in art, when you learn music, uh, when you learn art making, when you learn theater, there's so many applications about how that will serve you later in life in all kinds of settings. When you learn theater as a kid, you're going to be so much more comfortable with public speaking, with getting up in a boardroom and presenting your pitch to the boss, or you know, so many different ways that it's going to help you speak up for yourself uh, and learn those, those skill sets that will serve you in any career. Uh, when you learn music, it's going to help you with math. When you learn art making, it's going to teach you how to activate the right brain hemisphere that's going to help you with creative problem solving and communication later in life. And so I really feel like arts education is not just for its own sake, it's something that's going to help every generation become more well-rounded human beings and can be applied to pretty much any career that you can think of. I think a lot of young creatives have a hard time of it. Um, <laughs> they, they have a funny saying like, if you peaked in high school, it's all downhill from there. And you know, the really flip side of that is that if you had a hard time in grade school, junior high, high school, if you felt isolated, if you felt like you know you were picked on or bullied, chances are your life is gonna rock later. So please hold on to that. You know, if there's anyone you know, a young person that's struggling, um, you know, the expression, it gets better could not be more true. If you manage to hold on to that part of you that's different, that's special, that's quirky, that's weird in your younger days, you're going to be able to translate that and launch it into an extraordinary life later. Because, you know, when you graduate from high school, you're able to really start to find your own vibe, start to find your own people, your own tribe, and you can create your life from there. And I feel like lives that are created, that aren't just preordained, you know, step one, step two, step three, um, following the regular path that a lot of people that are the type that pick on people when they're young follow, um, that, you know, the creative life that you can launch after that kind of pain and suffering that you experience young is really going to be a more fulfilling and just a more fun life. And I also think, you know, anyone that has had that experience of being picked on, it's going to give you a lot of empathy and you're going to have a lot more understanding and love and sympathy for other people that is going to serve you well in life too because you're going to be a better communicator and you're going to be a more open-hearted adult. I didn't really have a proper mentor, unfortunately. I was pretty isolated, um, just kind of self-taught and learning on my own, um, which I feel like that wasn't necessarily an advantage because I really had to unlearn a lot of bad habits that I started um, as, as a young artist. And I also just had to learn by making my own mistakes. I think a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, you know, the first time you didn't have a contract signed on the dotted line and you don't get paid, you learn to make contracts from then out. Um, the first time that you don't have a company policies in place and then an employee does something crazy that you would never expect that they would have done. That's what informs those company policies that you learn to write down and have people sign. And so it really does, uh, it's like the, the school of hard knocks. I think you just learn a lot by what you did wrong. 
So, you know, if something goes wrong, if you made a mistake, just always think of it as a learning opportunity because that's how you grow. That's how you nail down your policies and your procedures. It's because you said, I'm not gonna do that again. So, you know, never take a mistake to heart. Just always learn from it and grow and move on. Success is, you know, such a, a slippery concept because honestly, I really do believe that it's the journey, not the destination. Even though I know that sounds a little bit cliche, no matter what you're striving for, go ahead and strive. I mean, it's especially in this country, it's the American way to want more and more and more and never be satisfied. But at the same time, while you're striving, Take time to enjoy your life. Make sure that you're constantly checking in on yourself, like, am I enjoying it? Because if you're not enjoying the journey, you're not gonna enjoy the destination. It's not like there's gonna be a magical switch that shifts everything when you get this. When, you know, if you're really just like, I want that, I want that, and you're not having fun along the way, when you get that, you're not gonna have fun either. So just keep that in mind, we all, as far as we know, only have one life to live, so make sure that it's your job to enjoy your life. As much as it's your job to do whatever else that it is you're doing in your career, your most important job is to enjoy your life. And if that's like the biggest message I can send you home with, you know, you when you die, you don't take anything with you, except I sort of think that you take love with you. I think that you take those connections and those relationships that you live on in people's memories. And so I really think that take care of your relationships, take care of your connections, strive through your career, through your work, uh, through your family, through your collaborations to develop real ties where you care about each other. Uh, one thing that I'm very happy about and I feel like has been successful in my life is that a lot of my business endeavors feel like family and we really feel like a lot of loyalty and a lot of love for each other and then the journey is as fun as the destination. The VR Lou team's awesome! <laughs> we had so much fun and you know whether it's just a small detail to make a client feel special and taken care of, like getting a text on the way to shoot where they say, what's your Starbucks order? We're stopping to get everybody Starbucks. And I was able to you know, ask my model and my assistant, what do you guys want from Starbucks? Like something so small like that is such a beautiful gesture that makes people feel cared for. Um, having a big Chinese dinner at the end of shooting day one all together was a chance to bond and relax and celebrate the successful day of shooting. So I think it's just really important to create that positive atmosphere on a set or in a workplace and I think the VR Lou team does an excellent job of that. So it's been a pure pleasure working with these guys and I really hope we do it again. I hope that people that watch my VR Lou experience will walk away with a new appreciation for art, for artists, for the hard work that we do, uh, with the inspiration to support artists, or with the inspiration to discover your own artistic side and maybe explore um, a new skill that you maybe didn't realize that you had. I hope that people come away really enjoying themselves and having fun and come away with a bigger appreciation of the process of like, you know, step one, step two, step three, and how much time and effort it does take to achieve um, a finished work of art. Because I always think that artists uh, deserve more appreciation and culture, and so, you know, I really hope that everybody comes away with a good time and some more art appreciation.